Professor? Professor Constable? It's almost 6.30. It's closing time. What? It's closing time. Oh, I see. I guess I lose track of time here. to try to learn to be comfortable with all that junk on. I want you to try to sleep normally and dream normally. Okay? I want you to do something for me. Something important. I'll finish up here for you. Well, can't it wait, Frank? No, it's for one of my oldest friends. Professor Constable. Constable? The man who wrote all those books on the mathematics of cybernetics. Samuel Hale, Constable? Yes, he's, he's had some sort of a psychic experience. Sounded very upset. And I told him I'd ask you to talk with him. Well, if Samuel Hale, Constable, has had a psychic experience, it must be a Lulu. <laughs> Dr. Ferguson will take over for today. I'll see you tomorrow, same time.
I'm Alex Lauder. Professor Constable's expecting me. Oh, yeah. Come in, please. Thank you. This way. Dr. Lauder, in your professional opinion, are there such things as ghosts? Many very intelligent people believe that there are. What do you believe? Well, I have an open mind about it. We've done some research on phenomena, spiritual visitations. It's hard to know what name to give them why. Maybe I should be visiting an analyst or in a sanitarium. But I saw and heard what I think is, what I'm sure is, my daughter, who was killed in an automobile accident 13 weeks ago. Professor, my basic field is extrasensory perception, not spiritual phenomena. Dr. Lauda. I heard her. I saw her. Now, if I'm hallucinating, I must know it and go for treatment immediately. If I'm not... My God, if I'm not... Well, when did you first become aware of these phenomena? It started two weeks ago. I, I heard or thought I heard her calling me. And then I noticed some things in her room had been moved, changed around. Although since the accident, no one's been allowed in there. I've kept the room locked. Somehow I couldn't quite face removing her toys and her clothes, removing the last vestiges of Mary's existence. Anyhow, there's a small play table in her room. And I remember on her last morning, how she put the turkey in front of the stuffed squirrel. And she insisted on giving the alligator to the teddy bear. Now eat around, dear. It's very good for you. And it's a splendid source of vitamin C. Professor? Professor Constable? Yes. Would you like to show me what's been moved? Well, as you can see, the alligator's now in front of the squirrel and the turkey's in front of the teddy bear. That's not the way she left it. This is Mary? Yes. My wife, Anor, used to sculpt until she became arthritic. She was doing that wax of Mary and had to stop suddenly, but a year ago, the hands became too stiff. But I wouldn't have bothered you if it was just a case of toys being moved. But last night, there was an appearance. I saw Mary and spoke to her. I wrote an account of it in as much detail as I could remember. It's all in here. It was on the way back from the cemetery. I heard her voice. I looked up and she appeared in the road ahead of me. I reached out for her. I almost touched her. And then she said, Daddy, Daddy, I hate being dead. And then she disappeared. Dr. Lauder, will you help me? Will you investigate? Oh, I'd be very happy to. But I'm afraid it's going to have to wait until I return from Switzerland. Switzerland? Yes, I have to address an international conference on parapsychology. I'll only be gone five days, though. Five days? Five days of not knowing whether well, I'm Well, I don't have to enough. leave until tomorrow night. Meanwhile, let's just poke around a little bit. I'd like to meet the rest of the household. Uh, shall we start with your wife? Thank you. Wonderful, remarkable child. But she's dead and gone. My husband has to learn to face that bitter, bitter fact, as I have had to. 
Then you don't believe that he really saw Mary's spirit last night? You're a trained psychologist. You know he didn't. You think he imagined it? My husband needs psychiatric treatment. And I'm grateful that you're here to help him realize it. Mrs. Constable, there have been reports mm -hmm. of spiritual visitations that just can't be explained in terms of our present scientific knowledge. But assuming for a moment that these phenomena are real, what do you think might be causing them? Dr. Louder, I've forgotten what causes snowflakes, but I know it's not a snow fairy. Well, in my line of work, we have to keep an open mind about snow fairies. And a very open mind as to whether the human spirit might act. Come in. Good morning. This is Dr. Paul Kreider, a great healer. I am an okay chiropractor with a great patient. I'm pleased to meet you, Doctor. Pleasure. Dr. Lauder is here to look into what Sam thinks he's been seeing. Miss Constable's told me how much you've helped her arthritis in this past year. Actually, it is more my daughter, Tina, more the hydrotherapy. But the important thing is Lenore's getting better. Give me your hand. Excuse me, Doctor, I don't want to interrupt your treatment, but have you or your daughter noticed anything unusual in the house that could help account for Professor Constable's experiences? No, I haven't. But then I pop in and out too fast. Maybe Tina can help you. She spends a great deal of time here. And I think you'd enjoy talking to her. She's very attractive. Well, then I'm sure I will. One question. Are Professor Constable's visits to the cemetery on a fairly regular schedule? Regular and too often. Three or four times a week. We've tried all of us to dissuade him. Mrs. Constable, your husband and Mary were closer than most father and daughters. At least I've gotten that impression. Yes, you see, Mary was an only child and born late in our lives. Soon after that, I became ill and couldn't be as active in Mary's life as Sam was. I suppose in that sense, her death has been a worse blow to him than to me. Then, too, he was driving the car and feels that if he hadn't been overtired, perhaps his reactions would have been faster and... Mary would still be with us. Guilt is a terrible and powerful thing. Are you suggesting, in a very gentle way, of course, that perhaps your husband might be causing these things to happen himself without knowing it? Well, have the psychic phenomena sometimes been explained that way? Self-delusion, unhappy people so desperately wanting to believe that they unconsciously tamper with facts? Well, that's a possibility, yes. But my job is to investigate, not to speculate. Doctor, where might I find your daughter this morning? Giving hydrotherapy instruction at Morningside Center. I will call her. Good, thank you. Mrs. Constable? Dr. Kreider? I look forward to talking to you both soon again. Dr. Lauder. You do understand what I was trying to say about Sam, don't you? Poor man. He wants so badly the dead not to be dead. Oh, I understand. Really, I do. Frank, how long have you known Professor Constable? Oh, we've been close friends for 20 years. Why? Has he ever been in the habit of taking medication regularly? Never. Not even since the accident. Matter of fact, just the opposite. He's always had the feeling or, or been afraid that medication of any kind might dull the mind. Okay. Now, have you ever noticed any neurotic behavior, irrationality, instability? No. He's the most logical and rational man I've ever known. That is, up until three months ago when Mary died. Alex, what are you trying to say? Well, either the professor is on the verge of a complete nervous breakdown, or what he says he saw is true. And if it is, this might be the first observable and provable instance of communication between the living and the dead in the history of mankind. Alex, you, you don't really believe. If I hadn't believed that were possible, I wouldn't take up parapsychology as a life's work. But parapsychology and spiritualism are two quite different fields. Are they? I don't know. Every day in the laboratory, I see things that I just can't explain. You ask me to help, and I'm going to try. I want to move into the constable house. If any more of these phenomena occur, I want to be there. Move into the house? For how long? What about Switzerland? The time being, Switzerland's going to have to wait.
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Hi, I'm Tina Kreider. Hi. Uh, my father said you wanted to talk to me about Mary. Yeah. I take it you know the house, everybody in it? Oh, sure do. We've been treating Lenore for over a year. Dr. Ladder, is there... Couldn't there be anything to all this about Mary coming back? Or did the accident and everything sort of blow the old man's mind? Oh, um, all right, that's enough for today. Let's get some coffee. Well, could there be anything to it? Well, might be. At least we have a detailed observation of a possible psychic phenomenon and from a very sophisticated and scientific mind. You think it could be true? Why is that such a shock? Well, I mean, wow. If Mary could come back. Yes? If Mary could come back, then anyone could. Even my mother, whom I never treated right. I'm awake. Well, there's something. I heard something. You better come up here. Right away. a dream. I try to come to you, but 
but they stop me. They say what you're doing is, is bad, wrong. Yes, I heard. What you're doing is bad, wrong. Daddy? Here. Here I am. See, Daddy? I'm really here. Remember the night before we left to take me to camp? I showed you my tooth was loose? I remember. Very well. The tooth came out this morning. I'm not real anymore, so I can't leave the tooth. But I made a dent here in the wax Mommy used. A dent of my tooth that came out. Daddy, they won't let me come anymore. If you don't stop doing those... those bad war things. War things? But Mary, I work for a private foundation. I... Mary? Mary, are you still here? She was here. Really here. You saw her. You heard her. But I made a dent here in the wax Mommy used. We both heard her and saw her. Whatever this is, you are not hallucinating. Oh, my God. Special Agent Saul Wiener. Counterintelligence Corps. <laughs> what am I suspected of? Burning my draft card? We're anxious to get a look at that wax impression of the little girl's tooth. He is doing war work. You've got the house bugged. You're pretty quick. <sighs> Wait a minute. The CIC isn't causing these appearances of his daughter, is it? You bet it isn't. We'd like to know who is. Uh, have you got that tooth impression with you? I'm taking it down in my lab along with the voice recordings. We've got a pretty good lab. Let's try ours. Is that an invitation or a command? Invitation. Okay. Dr. Lauder, I'm uh, sorry about the hour and the inconvenience we've caused you. I offer two words in explanation. National security. Well, those are very impressive words. My name is Augstadt. I'm a major general in the United States Army. Sit down. General, what's this all about? Well, in certain cases involving the national defense, Counterintelligence has given wide discretion in the use of wiretapping and other electronic devices. Such discretion was availed here. Now, what's this nonsense about constables communicating with his dead daughter? Have you ever considered the possibility that it might be just what he believes it is? Ghosts? General, if we were in my office, I could get from the files a list of distinguished scientists, philosophers, statesmen, even generals who are willing to at least admit the possibility of communicating with the dead. 
Oh, somebody's communicating with Professor Constable, all right. Somebody from the other side, all right. The other side in the Cold War. They're experts at defections and subversion. They use prostitutes, kidnapping, homosexuals, blackmail, phony morality, religion. Doesn't surprise me a bit that they'd use a decent man's grief and guilt over the death of his daughter. Do you know that after the accident when Constable was in the hospital, he talked to his dead daughter almost steadily for four whole days while he was unconscious? His wife told me that, yes. We think that somebody from the other side used this as an idea as to how to brainwash him. They want to stop Constable from doing any more work on uh, what he's been doing. Maybe they'll try to go all the way. Get him to defect. Samuel Hale Constable defect? Samuel Hale Constable believe in ghosts? Well, why don't you just go to him then? Surround him with police, special agents. We want to catch whoever's doing this, Dr. Lauder. And whoever it is is obviously very close to Professor Constable. I see. He told me tonight he was working for a private foundation. Yes. His work is very theoretical, and he is working for a private foundation. However, we also endow that foundation. Professor Constable's field is cybernetics, the science of communicating with computers. Submarines, missiles, even artillery are steered by computers. Mm. You know the thing about this case? There didn't seem to be any profit motive. There was no medium, no spiritualist, nobody with anything to gain. Have you checked the house for microphones or amplifiers other than your own? Yes, nothing. But access to the house is hard for us. So how about you doing it again? I can lend you a bug detector. Do you know how to use one? Dr. Louder. Gentlemen. I saw and heard and recorded an appearance tonight. But I just can't explain in your terms. There's an explanation. What about the wax impression of the little girl's tooth? Did you have that checked? Tell Douglas to come in. Please understand this. With something like this at stake, an unfriendly government can afford to spend a million dollars. Millions of dollars. What I mean is, don't expect any small slip-ups. Slab's all okay, General. Dust encrustations on the new impression just about what they should be. The little girl's dentist, Dr. L.F. Garotti, opened his files for us. Tooth impression exactly the right size and shape. As I was saying... Well, I heard you, General, but let's not make a mistake in basic logic here. Now, just because something could be a fraud, that doesn't mean it necessarily is a fraud. I can assure you, Dr. Lauder, that the dead are dead and can't talk to the living. Well, I forget the name of the man that assured Galileo that the sun definitely revolved around the earth. But I'm certain he had no doubts either. I've been taken advantage of, and I resent it very, very much. You must have known I turned down office to work for the Air Force and the Space Administration. I believe the military of the world have grisly enough weapons without science adding to the arsenals. This country may have to spend 12 billions on an anti-ballistic missile system. 12 billion. Is there a cheaper, more efficient defense? Is there a way to reprogram enemy missiles while they're in the air and send them harmlessly into the sea? It seems to us that some of your recent theoretical work suggests that there is. Sending them harmlessly into the sea. Or perhaps back where they came from? Million ton boomerangs? Perhaps. I'm not only in war work, but I'm at the most critical possible end of it. Missiles. I suppose subconsciously I knew my work could have military application. But I never really faced it. Not until last night. What happened last night? Who told you? No one under your jurisdiction. See, Daddy? I'm really here. 
Remember the night before we left to take me to camp? I showed you my tooth was loose. I've known her since she was born. That's how long I've been here. That's her little voice. Thank you, Helga. I got one thing to say. She was a wonderful little girl. Bright and, and loving. I mean to say, if God was going to choose somebody to come back, he'd choose Mary. Getting close to our bug. Hey, here's something in the window molding. Looks like a hat pin. It's fantastic. Is that yours? That about covers it. Seems to be the only bug in the room. If there's no spook equipment in that room, then someone has to be bringing it in before each phenomenon and taking it out afterwards. But no one's gone in or out of that house except our electrician, Professor Constable, Helga, Dr. Lauder, Dr. Ferguson, the chiropractor and his daughter. Until now. selling magazines. Hello. Is this the residence of Professor and Mrs. Samuel Hale Constable? Yeah. Was there a death in the family in the last few months? A little girl? Yeah. My wife has a message from the child for her father and mother. Mary. From Mary. May we come in, please? Mrs. is in. Then, as I understand it, Mr. Bessemer, your wife is what is usually referred to as a medium? I guess that's the word. She receives these thought things somehow. Sometimes she says them in German, sometimes in English. She must be quite a linguist. Well, actually, not at all. She doesn't understand any German, and I'm teaching her English. Mr. Bessemer, 
What was the message that Mary had for her mother and father? Well, what Debbie told me... She thinks we ought to wait until the mother and the father are both present. Oh, I see. Tell me, is she a professional? Does she accept contributions? Oh, no, never. I have a recording company. It does fine. This is just for love of fellow man. They tested her at the University of London. Tests in ESP and... Well, you probably know the kind. They said she was a true sensitive, whatever that means. It means she can't help getting these messages, I guess. I don't suppose you'd mind my testing her extrasensory perception, would she? Cartoon or test logi? Cute lady. She doesn't mind. Fine. I've got some cards that were developed especially for testing ESP. What's this one? Golaka. Circle. How's she doing? I'll give you a score in a minute. All right. Golaka. Circle. Golaka Tara Otoko. Circle, star, and square. River up that time, eh, Dr. Lauder? This is Professor Constable, Mr. and Mrs. Bessner. I'm grateful to you for coming to see us. What is the message from our daughter? Well, she says that those around her, forces around her, make it difficult for her to come to you. So Mary asked Debbie here if she would help her get through to you, which Debbie is glad to do. She's been helpful to others. I see. Well, how can this be arranged? How soon? Well, the more minds thinking hard, the easier it is to bring a spirit across. Get six, seven, up to a dozen people together and we'll try it. Maybe tonight. Mr. Bessner, why don't we use my laboratory at the university? We have perfect control there. Sure, sounds okay. Well, wouldn't it be better for Mary to be in her own room, in her own house? Ask her. It would be easier here. I see. Well, would you excuse us for a moment? Alex? Alex, I know for your purposes the university would be preferable. But I must keep in mind what is best for Mary. Alex, I want to tell you something. Something I learned just a few hours ago in Washington. Mary's spirit knew something I didn't know, or at least wouldn't admit to myself. No one knew, except a few defense officials at the Pentagon. It was just as Mary said. I've been up to my neck in war work and have been for the last two years almost. Alex, I know I'm less objective in this matter than you are, but I'm no less a scientist. I regard Mary's appearances as proven. Sir, I'd like to believe as much as you would. But the history of psychic investigation is one of hope after hope being dashed. I'm afraid the scientific community is going to require more proof. In fact, so will I. Haven't you ever wondered why man's great discoveries happen when they do? Fire existed long before we did. Why do you suppose that at a certain specific moment, man found it to be usable? Blood was circulating long before Harvey discovered that it was. Now, do you suppose that now that we have the ability to destroy the world, we're going to be given the understanding and the wisdom not to? I hope so. But I don't know, sir. What do your tests indicate about Mrs. Besma? Well, I suppose I've given that test or seen it given at least two, three thousand times. Of all the subjects I've seen tested, this woman is overwhelmingly the best. Yes, they wouldn't send an untalented medium, would they? They? The spirits, or whoever it is Mary is among. Sir, please keep in mind, a high score on the Xena cards doesn't have much to do with communicating with the dead. 
It indicates a high degree of psychic sensitivity, and that's all. Unless Mary is helping her as a way of bringing me to belief. Would you all put your chairs in a circle around Debbie here? About time we're starving. Yes, sir. Go ahead, General. Preliminary report through British CID has them uh, as uh, Arnold Watson Besmer and his wife Debbie Horinda Vishala Besmer married in a Delhi, India, August 29th. Seems legitimate. The recording company has three or four records out. She's not a sort of a medium. According to the newspaper files, she cooperated with the New Delhi police in solving a couple of crimes. I wish you'd give me a little help. Don't we all? He was born in Lancashire and... Hold it, General. I think the seance is starting. All right, everybody, can I have your attention, please? Debbie needs quiet. Now, she needs dark as well as quiet and positive thoughts. Uh, would you help turn off the lights, please, Dr. Lauder? Oh, I'd be happy to. Dr. Lauder and Dr. Ferguson here are both scientists, which is to say, professional skeptics. Now, will their presence here disturb Debbie or Mary? No, sir, I don't think so. If they'll just do their bit by thinking of Mary as hard as they can. Those that knew her, remember what she looked like, sounded like. The rest of us, Let's look at her belongings in this room and think about what she must have been like in this life. I remember Mary very well indeed. You were at her christening, Frank. You... I suppose we're to close our eyes. Oh, no, no. Just sit still and hold tight onto each other's hands. Mr. Bessman, do you mind if I take some photographs? I have some infrared film here. It doesn't make any flash or anything, but there's a slight clicking sound. That's okay. Uh, but please stay behind the others. Well, I'm fine back here. All right. Shall we hold on to each other's hands? Mr. Bessmer? Arnold, please, Alex. Arnold, uh, if we were doing this in my laboratory, I'd tie Debbie down to the chair with a little bit of thread. You think she'd mind? That don't look like it's very strong. <laughs> That's just the point. You see, if she were to move around or get up, the thread would break or entangle. She doesn't move around, does she? No, she doesn't. Now go right ahead. Thank you. Pardon. Now take each other's hands. Debbie always makes that sound when she's going into a trance. She'll be okay. hear you. Your mother's here too. Mary. Daddy, they say, they say I can never 
come again unless you stop what you're doing. I will marry. I will stop. Tell them that. Are you still here? The heat has been turned on. The heat are used for melting wax. Something's going on. Now take it easy, friends. Help Mary by keeping her in your mind. Please, Alex. Right away. Thread all in order? Seems to be, yes. Father, so many Himmelin. Yeah. Alex, is I see what you see. She stuck a hand in the melted wax and then into the water. Who well, seems to have? security file along with the professors and Mrs. Constables. Those are definitely Mary Constable's fingerprints inside the wax hand. Wiener, is there any chance that the little girl's body could have None. Been... She was cremated. Who is it? Alex. Did you check the fingerprints? They're Mary's. Of course they are. Alex, look at the size of that wrist opening. Now, no human hand can be withdrawn from that opening without breaking the wax. Might if I borrow this for a few hours? I'd like to examine it in the chemistry lab. I think I'll go with you. I'd like a little ride. Of course. He's not the kind of man usually goes joyriding. I wonder if he's guessed we're into this. Most of these scientists have done enough government work to be pretty sophisticated about bugging. And lots of them hate even the word security.
30 University Place, please. I should have planted a bug taxi in front of that house. I had to get out of the house. Also, Alex, I needed to speak to someone terribly. Do you accept what I'm about to say as a solemn confidence? Yes, sir, of course. Let's assume for a moment, just for a moment, that Mary's appearances are what they purport to be. It then follows that what she says is true, right? Well, we don't have any reason to believe that the dead are any smarter than the living. Yes, we do. Because for Mary to come back, it had to be with the approval and the permission of God. Well, that's an assumption, too. It's an assumption I feel I must make. If in the work I've been doing, I've somehow undone the balance of power between East and West, I'd become the instrument to unleash war on the world, in which case I'd be duty-bound to... to... To redress the balance of power by defecting? Turn left the next corner, let me out. Alex, do you mind if I get out here? I'd like to walk, which is to say, think. Tomorrow morning at six o'clock, I'm gonna leave my house. Get into a cab and take the early plane to Canada, then Europe. I can think more freely there. Well, listen, there's not that much of a hurry. I know when we're strung out about decisions that we want to get the agony over as soon as possible. Every day that Mary's presence is denied me is precious to me. And I feel she wants me to hurry. I tell my wife, she's in such a nervous condition, I don't think she'll be able to keep the secret. So I ask you to state my case fairly to Lenore and Frank Ferguson. There are some who will at least listen. Be the best advocate you can. And don't forget, you've accepted a solemn obligation. forget. the physics department run this piece of wax through their spectroscope first thing in the morning? Of course. Alex, what do you think they'll find? It's ordinary artist wax with a low melting point and very little pigment, but it's worth a try. Why don't you go to bed now? Why don't you? Yeah, I know. Rock me too. More than rock me, Alex. I was married for 30 years. When my wife died, well, if I thought I could speak to her somehow, once again, Alex, I'm praying that this is all true. So don't count on me for objectivity. Well, why don't you go to bed anyway? I promise you I'll give you a ring if there's any breakthrough. Come. But I'm in your way, dithering at you. I'll go to my office and try to work. See you in the morning. <laughs> I'll see you later tonight. I'm drawing closer. 
divorce her. Hello. Your father's here with me. He sends love to all and says, stop biting your nails. No, no, it was nothing like that. There was no tinny echoing effect, nothing. Alex, I miss you so. Come to me soon up here, Alex. Years ago, people who'd never seen a movie were real carried away seeing a picture like that. Of course, you had to conceal the projector and keep changing the focus. You'd be pretty good at throwing your voice. In the days of vaudeville, almost everybody in the show business knew some ventriloquism. You know, for a lot of people then, spiritualistic seances were a form of entertainment. So it was hanging. Folks used to think about dying and the afterlife a lot more than they do now. I have three phenomena. The voice, the appearance, and the hand. And I can't explain one of them. You're welcome to go through my library. There's something there about almost every illusion ever heard of. I've only got until six o'clock in the morning. What? I have until six o'clock to find out how these tricks have been done. If they are tricks. Or what? Is the world gonna blow up or something? <sighs> Thanks for opening up so late, Mr. Bush. Uh, doctor, let me say two things. First, where there's a spook, there's an operator. Don't doubt that. Second, you're going about this backwards. When you see a new illusion, don't try to figure out how it was done. That's a waste of time. Just start from zero and say, this is the illusion I want to create. Now, how will I go about it? This is the illusion I want to create. Now, how do I go about it? It's the getting it off that's tough, huh? Yeah, it's the getting it off that's tough. It's the size of the hand. It's who in that room could have done it, if anyone. Have a nice taxi ride with Professor Constable this evening. You come all the way up here just to ask me that? No telephone service here after 8 p.m. Thought he might have said something important. We had an okay taxi ride. Our lab expert tried greasing his hand, but the wax still broke like that. <laughs> You've been experimenting too, huh? We gave it a try. You're sure nothing we ought to know about that taxi ride? If you need me for anything, use this number. Thanks. I never make threats. Neither does the department, so don't misunderstand this. If you have any friends in the law school here, ask them to define treason for you. It's a pretty broad definition. Sorry if we startled you, miss. No, that's okay. I'm looking for Dr. Louder. Do you know where he is? You'll find him in there. Alice! Steven Ryder! Hi. What's up? Having a good time? I enjoy simple pleasures. I, uh, I had to talk to you, Alex, about tonight. Do you mind if I sit down? No, go right ahead. Uh, Dr. Ferguson called the constables, and uh, I asked him where to find you. Well, what's on your mind, Tina? Well, tonight really got to me. 
Up until now, I guess I thought Professor Constable was, well, you know, going off the deep end. But then seeing Mary, hearing her, so I don't know what to believe. Alex, do you believe it's possible? Yes, I do. Unless I can prove otherwise. I see. What's all the tape equipment for? I'm going to analyze the voices at the seance. Compare them with Mary's voice. Very impressive looking. All part of my mad scientist kit. Look, Tina, I'm really kind of busy, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to just come... My hands are too large by quite a bit. Tina, did you notice anybody breaking the circle at the seance? On one side, I held Lenore's hand. She certainly didn't. On the other side was my father. Of course, I might be covering up for him. Oh, I wasn't talking about you. No, oh, weren't you, Alex? Well, if the glove fits. Oh, I mean, if the shoe fits. I'm sorry I bothered you. Identify? Uh, just movement around the house. What do you mean movement? Walking? Drilling for oil? What do you mean movement? It's too far off mic. It's footsteps. A soft sound. Like maybe something, something on a bed. It's a click. Metallic. Suitcase. Could that be it? Packing. Yeah, like like packing. Yeah, I said like packing. It may not be. All they have to do is get him to a so-called neutral country. And there it would be easy to make him disappear behind the Iron Curtain. Thanks, Dad. General, we hear sounds that might indicate he's packing. How about trying to get a warrant so we can move in? Can't do that. He hasn't broken any law. Might be going on a legitimate vacation or to a scientific congress or something. We have every scientist in the country down on our backs. Well, I thought maybe some judge might move on suspicion. Uh, we have the tapes of the seance. It's just hard sitting around here doing nothing. Uh, the young spook expert's still our best bet. I'll be here. He says our best hope is still louder. So I guess I'd better go see how he's doing. Yes? Lenore, may I come in? Of course. I was on my way down to the kitchen when I saw your light. Did I catch you before you took your Stephen pill? Just. The norm, I've been debating all night whether to come in and talk to you or quietly depart in the morning, maybe leave you a note. Depart, Sam? For where? The norm, this astonishing communication from Mary 
and to me that's just what it is. There's been a great deal that I feel I cannot discuss with someone who doesn't believe. Now, although you are her mother, I feel that you're shutting Mary out when she needs our belief and our faith. Sam, there has to be another explanation. I know that's how you feel. I don't. I came to say this. I can't tell you all I'd like to tell you. But in all our years together... Lenore, please trust me. And believe that what I'm doing, I'm doing soberly and with love. With love, Sam? Love for... For you and for Mary and for all our fellow human beings, alive and dead. I've been moving around a lot, traveling. I'll send you postcards. Good night, Lenore. Good night, Sam. way to make a wax hand. Look, it may not be the way, but it is a way. I can make a wax hand, and I can etch the fingerprints onto the glove like this, see? And then someone could smuggle a glove into that seance, and then in the dark, blow it up, and dip it into the melted wax. Oh, no, wait a minute. There wasn't enough time to melt the wax. Now, how did they manage that apparition? And how could anybody get a dead girl's fingerprints? A dead, cremated girl. Oh, boy. I didn't realize how little I knew until I started to boast to you about it. Well, I've decided for bed. How about you? You don't have to solve the whole mystery tonight. If I don't, Professor Constable will... What? Constable will what? Frank, you're a real nice guy, but I wish you'd get out of here. Alex? Frank, please! All right. It's terrible to be old and discarded. But, all right. See you tomorrow.
wait here. Take him just far enough so he can find louder. brother's keeper. Goodbye. Please, don't forget me. Goodbye. 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 He was playing the recordings of Mary's voice. Getting too close. How will Professor Constable react? Won't killing louder make him realize? No, nothing will be suspected. It, it is a gas which evaporates in a couple of seconds. They'll think young intellectual working too hard, heart attack. The Americans will probably blame it on vitamin deficiency. Or smoking. Anyway, Constable will be on a plane out of here in just a few hours. We won. Mr. Grady, do you have the keys to the audiovisual supply room? Grady's off tonight. I'm just filling in. Has he got the flu again? I'm new here. And I don't have the keys. Okay. Thanks anyway.
guessed wrong. a light projector? It, it projects a holograph, a three-dimensional picture. But that night on the road, Mary opened the car door. How? It's like, like the Czechoslovakian show La Terna Magica, where they mix film with live actors. We used a little girl made up to look like Mary. Mm. 
she was smuggled into the country just for that one day. They use this pen-sized laser beam to project Mary's image and some remote control tapes for her voice. But they needed to distract us during the seance so they could materialize the wax hand. So they took some water vapor and they sprayed it in the room and projected Mary's image on it. Naturally, in the warm air of the room, the vapor tended to rise. And while we were looking up, I was photographing the ceiling. But the wax hand... I mean, in front of witnesses and in the dark. How could they make it so quickly and so perfectly? It wasn't. It had already been made, complete with Mary's fingerprints, which they'd obtained from her toys from this very room here. And it was smuggled into the room during the seance. You see, Dr. Kreider was surrounded on both sides by fellow conspirators. He had Bessmer on the right here and Tina on the left, so he was completely free to move about the room. And while we were looking up, he merely turned on the wax heater took the replica of Mary's hand and placed it in the water. When I turned on the lights, there it was. Tangible proof that Mary had returned from the dead. Somehow the hardest thing for me is, is, is Tina. Someone living in your house, watching. I loved Tina. Really loved her. I think that's the worst, being made a fool of by someone you really cared for. She was very highly trained. Incidentally, no relation to Kreider. They were infiltrated into this country through Canada over ten years ago. What we call sleeper spies. So was the cab driver. They were being saved for some very important job. Like this one. Well, what about Bessman and his Hindu wife? We picked them up, but they haven't said anything. They were here on visitor's visas and were given clearances by British CID. Well, I asked you to find out how these phenomena were caused, and you did. Thank you. I wish... I know, I know. I'll have this room cleared out as you've always wanted. She was a wonderful child, Sam. Mr. Wiener, I want to thank you for... Sam, after seeing Mary in the seance, I felt I had to finish the bust while she was still so... so close to us. But I thought your hands were... Better. Just suddenly much better. The drier weather, I imagine. Yes, of course. Police. Don't forget me.